Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and we are actually doing a deck profile for a change. If we could get this damn glare, well, the glare ain't gonna do shit. Whatever. But if you guys could smash the ever living boo boo, staying off of that like and subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. Yes, I know what you're thinking, Avery. How the hell do you already have a deck profile for the new ban list? Because the changes that you can make in this deck are easy. This is from my locals today where your boy went undefeated 5-0 against some very good players. So don't think, oh, this is just the locals. No, no, no. There are some good players here for the most part. Um, the last three rounds were kind of a bit more competitive than the first two. But that's usually how the locals can go. Um, I want to talk about purely because I do already have some ideas for changes to the deck post the June 2023 ban list. So don't think that you're just wasting your time watching this video. And I actually have a side deck to show you. Unlike certain other people in the community that say, oh, uh, this YCS is coming up. I ain't going to show my side. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> so no hard feelings. I'm just busting balls. So let's go ahead and dive on into this deck list. Round one, uh, we played against something that wasn't really meta from what I recall. Um, we 2 owed it. Round two, we played against Heroes. The guy was still learning the deck. We 2 would him. Round three, we went in against a Melfi Sprite, which was really scary. Luckily, we were able to pull off the uh, three game wins. We won game one and game three. Round four, we went against our homie Josh, uh, who was playing Cash Tira, and we only won game three because I top decked Lightning Storm, uh, even with playing Hand Traps. So it's like, you know, you're expecting Hand Traps instead you get hit with a Board Breaker. And then uh, that was round four. Round five, we played against another Cash Tira. We ended up winning in game three we were able to clutch that victory basically just broke his board of shangri era and a rise heart with a zeus with plenty of materials so it worked out very well for us so let's go ahead and dive on into this deck profile like i said this is technically before the june 2023 balance but i have changes that i'm going to tell you about so you're not wasting your time so uh we're playing three copies of what i heard one person on youtube call this was uh three copies of white woman <laughs> i think that's hilarious uh, and then three copies of what he called Black Woman. I, I prefer the name Light Eevee and Dark Eevee. Uh, I know in my video I said I wasted $400 on this deck and I hate the deck. I still kind of hate this deck, believe it or not. But yet with the new ban list, it's become slightly better, even with Delicious Memory at one copy, because it just hurts the OTK factor. But yet it's like, if you attack with an Exceed, you break the opponent's board either with a Zeus or you're sitting on a fat-ass Noir with a bunch of Exceeds materials, you're going to probably win anyway. You can beat them by next turn. Uh, so that's it for the main deck monsters. You should be playing three of each. If you're not, I just don't know what you're doing. We're playing three copies of Droll. Even going into this new format, uh, I feel that Droll is still going to be very good. Um, it makes purely be a turn skip for anyone still playing Super Heavy Samurai. I mean, the balance just came out today, so who knows? Maybe they're still good. Uh, this shuts them down, especially now that they can't reborn their monster with the Link monster because it's banned. Or, yeah, it's banned. And then if they go Soul Pierce or Search, you just Droll them and win. So I, I really very much like Droll. They were playing three copies of Ash because it's disgusting. And then I decided to test today from a build that I saw uh, the other day is two copies of Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill. So it's like a Veiler, but it gets around a Rise Heart because it doesn't say discard this card of the grave. It just says discard this card. The thing is you have to do it right when the monster is special summoned. So if they go like special summon unicorn and you activate moonlit shield to negate the unicorn, if they have another unicorn that they can get out, then they can still use that unicorn to search. Um, but it also combos well with Noir because you can negate a monster on the opponent's field, use Noir to bounce that monster, and then they still take damage because it says it leaves the field. I really don't know how I felt about this card. I side decked it out a lot. Uh, going second because I wanted to do my board breakers more and I would cut down on my hand traps in favor of board breakers and so Because of that really moonlit chill only came up one time and it was against cash Tira and I ended up still losing that game anyway So I'm thinking I might cut the moonlit chills and go back to like ogre uh, And similar with like delicious memory I may cut the two delicious memory for like either a third talents and one called by or I'll just go back to playing two book of moon um, Moonlit Chill, I feel really underperformed. I think I'd rather have like Ghost Ogre or something of, of that nature. Something that didn't do a damn thing, but I was really happy to have it just in case. Kurakara. This card is disgusting the times that in testing it's come up, but it didn't come up once today. Um, the times that I drew it, I was going first, so it was useless. Um, and the games that I lost, which were very rare, I just never saw Kurakara. Um, yeah, Kurakara is Kurakara. I didn't know until just the other night that every turn that it's face up, each of your end phases, you can resurrect a monster. It's not just on the turn that's summoned. Still a very good card. You should definitely play three of it, especially going into this new format. 
Um, but yeah, it just, Karakara Kara never came up. It's very good. You should definitely play it. Um, and then that's it for the monsters. We're not playing any sub-engines. I feel that sub-engines can be just a bit bricky. The Bridge of Salvation package, I don't like. It's a brick and a half. Um, and then the Dark World package just doesn't really feel rewarding. It feels more bricky than anything else. I would rather draw hand traps that I can ditch if I don't need them than be drawing Dark Worlds that can just be bricks going second. I'd rather have the hand traps, especially because before this ban list came out, uh, t I almost said Team Samurai X1. Super Heavy Samurai were playing like an average of 15 fucking hand traps, and I saw one build that was playing 19, so I'm like, y you have to keep up somehow. So I decided to go with the 11 hand traps because um, we're also playing Triple Imperm. For the spells, we're playing three copies of Pretty Memory. Uh, card's disgusting. I love its uh, Exceed effect. Three copies of Sleep Memory. This becomes better in Duelist Nexus once we get the uh, Baby Noir Rank 2 Exceed because this requires Sleepy Memory. So um, it's still very good. I actually used it one time to nullify damage because uh, I had a plump up. So I activated Sleepy, chain plumps effect to attach it. So I'd be, uh, what do you call it, solidified or... Uh, whatever from damage uh first bow effect damage i take would be zero so uh i was able to uh insulate myself that's where i'm going for now let's talk about this three delicious memories so we lost two you still have the one it makes it harder to search off of my friend um obviously but with one you can still reuse it if you detach it off of like noir or one of your other exceeds i feel that plump may drop down to what one of i have to test that but in replacement with the two deliciouses, you could play a third talents because we're already playing two and a call by. You could play two book of moons. There's a lot of things that you could substitute for this or hell, even more hand traps where it's not that detrimental. It's really not the end of the world. This is just meant more for OTKing. You usually want to end on beauty going first anyway, um, ideally with a plump. But if you got to pick one or the other, Beauty is definitely a great way to go because it's a negate, especially if you can get Leap, you can negate something and then have the Noir and be off to the races. Uh, this just makes it harder to get to Plump, so the 5 mat Noir doesn't happen as often. So those are things that you can replace for the Delicious Memory. Of course, it was very good uh, in today's tournament. Actually, at one point, I had 10 materials on a Plump and it had 6,200 attack, and I was like, yeah, that's great. That was against the Sprite Guy Game 3, so I just activated a Happy Memory, attached it to Plump, and then banished his monster. I was overthinking it, because I'm like, wait a minute, you're under 6,000 life points. All I gotta do is banish your monster and swing for game. Uh, and then we're playing 3 Happy Memory. The OTK never came up. I made X Purely Happiness once, like round 2 against the Hero Guy, and I was able to attack for game, but other than that, it, Happy Memory is just kind of whatever, but you play 3 because it's good. Uh, three, my friend, uh, you side deck out one copy when you're going second because you really don't want to see this going second. It's not all that great. Um, anytime you're going first, you, you want to be playing these three, but it's it's really good. It was like $25 to $30 for a reason when I bought it. And then one street, like I said, we're not playing a sub-engine. Street is... It, it's street. It's it's fine. Uh, two talents. Um, this might get... Bu like I said, this might get bumped up to a third. You could play thrust. I just don't like thrust in this deck. Like You could maybe side deck thrust. I just don't know how I feel about Thrust. Like, I don't want to have to play other cards to side deck in just to make Thrust better. And I was already side decking out the talents when I went second anyway because I didn't feel it was as good. I'd rather use it after I get hand trapped to, like, rip a card out of the opponent's hand or something. Which, people forget what their shit does. I don't know what it is. I, like, three times today at Locals, someone would go Prosperity, grab talents, and then play talents to draw two. I'm like, you can't draw Sugar Boo Bear. You already played the Prosperity, and then they read the Prosperity, and they're like, oh, that's fine. Like, I'm not trying to throw shade at anybody. It was more funny than anything, because, I mean, I'm friends with everybody in my locals, but I'm just like, bro, you can't draw. You just play Prosperity. What are you doing? Anyway, uh, uh, for the traps, I'm playing three Imperm. One's uh, a super, two's our golds. Don't don't judge a boy. And then this is my little hot tech. I'm playing two copies of Leap. Um, I saw one build playing three. Uh, this is from the, I think, Norfolk, Virginia Regional that was playing two copies. Um... Two copies really never came up. I, it came up one time where I searched the second copy to have it as backup, but I do like two. I don't think that this will change moving into the new format. I think some people will still just play one or two. I think three is a little bit too killer at this point. Um, if you play three, it gives you the ability to search it off of my friend to guarantee the search, but you're usually going to search it off. You're usually going to search a quick play off of my friend, and then you're either going to grab a leap or straight purely street with uh, Lily anyway. So I like this at two copies. I think that's going to be fine moving forward. Uh, for the extra deck, uh, we're playing two copies of Plump. Like I said, this might get changed to one now that Delicious Memories at one, which is fine. I mean, it, it gives you the ability to play three beauty potentially. Or even potentially a third Zeus, which 
I like the sound of that. That definitely gets us hard. Um, yeah, I, I don't think two plump is going to be all that necessary to uh, to be playing moving forward. I could be wrong. It just depends on what happens in testing. Uh, two copies of Beauty. Beauty's disgusting. Uh, this was great in the Cash Tira matchup, being able to negate his monsters. Uh, at one point, I think it was game three in the last round of the Cash Tira matchup, he had Birth, Fenrir, and Unicorn up. He tried to activate Unicorn to search, and I used uh, Beauty to negate, and he didn't use Fenrir to banish my monster. But if he did, I had Leap, and he knew I had the Leap, and I just sat on the Leap in the back row until he tried to use Fenrir to banish this, and then I just made Noir and bounced his shit. Uh, this this card is, is fantastic. Um, and then we're playing one happiness. We pulled a super out of our OTS pack, so we swapped out a rare. It's so it's so adorable. <laughs> uh, two copies of Noir. This is still going to stay at two no matter what. I don't give a fuck when anybody says you got to play X purely happiness. This card is disgusting. Diabolsis is banned. There is no reason why you should not be playing one X purely happiness and one of the rank two happiness because this card just wins you fucking ball games. I don't want to have to rely on a 2000 attack happiness swinging into monsters to win because that's not always going to come up. I would rather have the X purely happiness when I know I need a big beat stick for game. This card's disgusting. I don't care what anyone says. I love this card. Uh, and then we are playing one Ensemble Robin. I actually never made this today. Uh, one Nightingale. I just never made it. Uh, Kiki Nagashi Fuko, or Fucko as I like to call it. This card's good. I just never made it. Uh, and then we made Downer once because we're playing the double Zeus. Uh, Zeus only came up like I think three times today. Um, I honestly would want to bump this up to a third. And then we're playing the Agent of Moon in case someone wants to be a douchebag and skill drain us. <laughs> Which I'm surprised that that didn't go to one on this... Uh, previous ban list. I know people were afraid it was going to. Um, let's go ahead and dive on into the side. The side deck was a little bit in the works because I was testing for this regional and that clearly is irrelevant now. Um, but I want to show it off anyway because like I said, I actually have a side deck to show unlike other people. We. I sound like I'm being an asshole, but it's it's all jokes. Um, three Vanity Spheen. I'm still not going to change this post ban list. Uh, we are changing the fucking gammas though. Um, Vanity Spheen really didn't come up today. The one time that I opened with it, I had different plays to make. Like, I, I kind of didn't open up the best. So I went like normal summon Lily and my opponent didn't have any hand traps. I was able to kind of end on something decent. In theory, this is good because you can use a quick play to ditch another card, summon out a purely, get its effect, and then like do your combos. Then at the end of your combo, tribute off like an addition, like an extra purely on your board for a Vanity Spheen. And then you can just slowly whittle them down because of this. Um, I had the ability to summon it once and it just never came up. I still really like it though. Um, do not play this shit. This is dog shit now. <laughs> just one gamma and one driver is dog shit. Don't, don't play this. I'm going to cut these four, um, for three evenly match. Uh, and I'm only playing one Santa Claus in the side right now. This is going to get bumped up to two more. Uh, we're also playing a pointer. So right now my plan is to cut the appointer and the four card side frame package for three evenly match and two more Santa Claus. Um, I feel that that's going to be good. And then try and figure out maybe some other cards that I can use for going first, um, just because I want to have an equal amount of cards for going both first and second. Uh, so definitely play the three Santa Claus. Lightning Storm's at two, and yet we're still playing one Feather Duster, so I don't give a shit about Lightning Storm going to two. Play this package, and you're fine. <laughs> like, literally. Um, we actually won a game with Lightning Storm, though, uh, against uh, my buddy Josh. We top deck Lightning Storm, and he's got, uh, like, I think a Fenrir and Birth up with the Dark Arm Annihilation, and I top deck Lightning Storm. And I go, your Dark Arm doesn't have any protection, right? He goes, no. I go, okay, activate Lightning Storm. He's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> so, yeah, Lightning Storm was, was clutch. Uh, and then we're playing, this is disgusting, three copies of Summon Limit, and then the one a pointer. This is going to get changed for something else. It's not a big deal. This never even came up. Summon Limit's a god card. Uh, we beat Sprite with this. So game three, the guy goes, uh, normal summon blue. I go, yeah, sure. He goes, special summon blue, activate effect to search. I go, ash. Uh, and then I'm like, if you play talents, I'm going to cry. He goes, talents, take control of your noir. I go, chain, uh, detach two, bounce your blue, detach two again, uh, bounce your other blue. So after he normal summoned the first blue at the beginning of his turn, I activate summon limit. And that's why he special summoned the second blue and I was able to bounce back his cards. He attacked for 1100 with the noir and passed and we got it back. Really, I didn't have to ash on the second blue, but I wanted to be safe and sorry. So, but I probably kind of misplayed there a little bit. I didn't need to do that. But some limit at three is definitely a must. So, I know this is a bit of a long deck profile, but I also want to talk about changes to the side. Um, really, what it's going to come down to is taking out 
these five cards. Uh, these three will be evenly matched. These two will be Santa Claus. And um, I don't really see myself making any other changes because the Gammas were for going second and the Appointer was for going first. So in reality, I'm only losing technically one slot in the side deck for a going first card. But yet the going first game plan with this deck is already so good. Like you just throw in summon limits and vanities and like you're off to the races. I feel that's all you really need. So guys, let me know what you think about this purely deck profile down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.